Hey, what's going on? I just got a question on one of my uh, silly YouTube videos from iBassy or iBassyC, and they said, hey, can you make a video on how to prepare yourself for an interview to have a better chance at passing it? Now, I've written uh, or done some videos on how to prepare for um, or how to get the interview or how to pass the interview, but I actually haven't talked a lot about the exact process of preparing the interview. And I want to tell you um, this right now. I do have a superpower cheat pro tip, hack, whatever you want to call it, that has made a very big difference. And I think it's going to make a big difference for you. So here's the thing. Go online to, to Google or something and uh, search whatever the studio is you want to work at and then interview questions. If you're lucky, there'll be a glass door page that actually outlines previous questions that other interviewees have faced um, from this company. So for example, let's say I'm applying at Naughty Dog and I want to be um, a programmer. Well, guess what? They're going to ask me what is the equation for a plane? Or at least they've asked a previous prospective programmer what is the equation for a plane. So I got to tell you, there's no greater way to prepare for the interview than uh, perhaps knowing some of the questions beforehand. And so I would definitely search whatever the studio is you're looking for on this Glassdoor website and try to see if other questions have been posted for this company. And sometimes, you know, this website, Glassdoor, actually has a really good community. Some of the other people will help answer the question. So sometimes they'll work together and actually have an answer like this. Um, so this is great. So they'll talk about, you know, what are the different things here? And for the most part, if, you're fa if you see a question for a gameplay programmer uh, interview on this website, then almost always the answer I'll have covered in my super duper study sheet. So this is, uh, you know, the, the free guide I've made basically. Um, I'll link it in the description, but this is the guide that will go <laughs> verbatim about all the technical stuff you need to know for the interview. So, you know, binary tree traversals, bitwise operations, um, uh, multi-threading, uh, what else? You know, all, all, all general math. All this stuff is going to be covered in this page. So if you find on the website an interview question that isn't already addressed in this study sheet, let me know and, and I'll add it. But for the most part, just studying directly from the study sheet, I, I think is the best way to prepare. Um, in particular, I have some review questions here. And I would say, if you have some time the day before or the morning of the interview, go through these review questions and just see if any of them get you stuck. If there's some place where you might be a little rusty, want to catch up on that. Um, I, I tried to pick a little bit from, from all the different sections of the guide and, and create some reviews here. And obviously, if you have a question on one of these, it's answered uh, somewhere else in the guide. So I would say use this study sheet. This will be linked in the description. And then just in general, I have sort of like the social questions. Um, this is a different guide. This is Hacking Games. And this talks about how to break in and actually get the interview. Because I know some people watching this video, you know, they want to prepare, but also they, they haven't landed the interview yet. This is, this is the guide to help you land the interview. And then now we're talking about how to prepare. So the number one thing is if there are specific questions from the team, nothing better than that, folks. Otherwise, you should go to this study sheet, which will have sort of like the generic questions that might be asked of any gameplay studio. Now, when I'm actually interviewing, I love to have this study sheet in front of me for a quick control find, uh, anything that I might need to know, right? So sometimes, you know, some questions, right, will be very bad questions, right? So for example, I've had, I've had a question sometimes where someone will say something like, um, please describe to me the adapter pattern, right? And so a lot of people are familiar with the adapter pattern, but they might not know it by the exact name the adapter, right? And some of these have like a little, you know, silly names like um, like a subclass sandbox. You might not be familiar with the subclass sandbox, but you're probably familiar with the principle. And so, you know, when they ask you a question like that, I think those are kind of shitty questions, but it does help to have like a control find. So you could say like, oh, what's a subclass sandbox? Oh, it's this thing. I just didn't know it was called that, but now I can speak to that. Um, so, so I do, I find that's useful there because generally if you're on an interview, um, it's okay to have notes, but it, it, it's not okay to be, you know, Googling every question that, that you need to know, right? Because at some point they're they're trying to ask that. And also I'd say you could be pretty vocal with your interviewer. I certainly have and I've landed positions from that where I say something like, oh, that's a good question. Um, 
I'm not sure. I've definitely heard of that before. Let me check my notes for a moment. And all the while, while I'm doing that, I'm already control finding it. And then I say, oh, okay, yes, it's this, right? So for example, um, that's a good way for me to try and prepare because sometimes it's on this sheet, but I haven't exactly memorized it yet. As you guys know, I have a terrible, a terrible memory, which is why the reason I, I do these sheets in, in, in practice. And so a lot of the time I've put into creating the sheet is, is trying to figure out what's a better way to memorize stuff. So for example, I was recently asked on an interview, what are the common, um, casts? What are the common casts in C++? Right, so for example, you could cast an int, to, or you could cast a float to an int. Maybe I don't, I don't know if you could do that one, but you could cast between these these different uh, things. And the question is, how would you do that? And so um, what I did was I just control find casts, and I know I have a section there where I can refer to each one and and what it does. But let's say I'm asked this interview in person, which during Corona is unlikely, but it's very likely once things start up again. Um, now I'm prepared, I'm ready, I've created a little mnemonic for me. So the mnemonic here is coders and designers rarely sleep, okay, const dynamic reinterpret static. And so that, now I'm never going to forget it, right? And But the thing is, I, I didn't necessarily know I needed to memorize that until somebody asks me, oh, do you know this offhand? You know, knowing all the casts offhand, I don't know if that's necessarily like a an important skill, but the thing is that who gives a shit, right? An important skill is whatever it takes to get the job. So I'd say, um, if it's on the sheet, yeah, it'd be great to memorize it. But if you can't memorize it, then at least having the sheet in front of you as a, as a quick reference, I, I think is, is a good way to go until you build up uh, the muscles to, to have this second nature, right? So for a lot of people, uh, especially who've been working in the games industry for a while, cross product, dot product, um, a lot of these formulas are, you know, they're in their mind. They've memorized them already. But if, if you're not there yet, which is totally fine, I'm certainly not there yet with a lot of these things, um, it helps to have a quick reference. And the thing is, I don't just use this study sheet for preparing for the interview. I also use it on the job. I'm referring to it all the time because I, I am often going to forget how to do um, an in place new or, or something complicated like that for C++. Um, so, that, so that's what I would say. For specific questions, glass door. For general preparedness and also having it in front of you during the interview, I'd say the super duper study sheet. And so, of course, those are the more uh, technical sides of the interview. How would you prepare for some of the soft skill stuff? Um, I would say one of the things people sort of overlook is just preparing yourself for answering why are you applying to that studio itself? And so the most common question on a design interview is almost always, what's your favorite game? And how would you change it? What improvements would you make to its design? Very often, they will wiggle that question a little bit to say, have you played our most recent game? And if you haven't, then that's not a good thing. So hopefully you have. And even if you just play, if you even if you just watched a Let's Play on YouTube, that's better than nothing. But then they'll say something like, okay, and what's your feedback for the design? How would you change that? If it is a design-oriented or interview, I'm always going to be looking up the uh, YouTube Let's Plays or uh, all the reviews on that game to see what people are complaining about. One of the uh, great ways to do that is go to the Metacritic for a game. So if you do Metacritic uh, God of War, then it will show everything that people had to say about this. And in particular, you can look at um, reviews sorted like uh, worst to best. I might forget how to do that right now. Uh, but there's a way to, so you could say user score, maybe is that it? Well, there's a way to sort these reviews from best to worst, and that's really useful because then you can see, okay, what's everything somebody has a complaint about? And then you can see, okay, do I does this resonate with me? Do I agree that that's a bad part of this game? Or um, do I have a more nuanced opinion on that? Maybe I think um, it's actually a good trade-off considering they did something else. So I would say if you're preparing for a design-oriented interview and a gameplay programmer is sort of on the cusp of the design and the engineering, so you, you might want to prepare yourself for those kind of questions uh, in this format of, of sort of looking at what people have said and then questioning to what degree that's resonated with you. I'd say that's a great approach. Another thing is why are you? Why do you want to work here? You know, why do you want to work at Fortnite? And I'd say you should definitely have prepared a narrative that explains whatever the work experience you put on your resume and how it leads to the position you're applying to. So I don't have every position I've ever worked on on my resume. I only have what's relevant to the kind of work I want to do. So if I, in high school, you know, was an intern for McDonald's, I don't, I don't have that here because it's just not relevant, right? It, it, it's, it's drawing focus away from what's important. Um, however, 
Uh, it, it can be a little bit difficult at times if you've worked in a number of different fields. You know, why are you working here? Or, or, it seems like everything you've done here is totally miscellaneous. Well, it's at that point, it really does become important for you to explain to your interviewer. Again, we're talking about the social aspect of this, not the technical side, but to explain from a social standpoint, why is it that you want to work at, at Fortnite, you know? And, and one answer might be something like, well, you know, um, I started with, with working on mobile games and then I had the opportunity to, to work at um, a studio that was working on a bigger project, something that people uh, cared a little bit more about. You know, something I always talk about here is there are games that people play to pass the time, right? Something that they have in their phone where they just uh, do it while they're on the bathroom or online to get their Subway sandwich. And then there are games which are not to pass the time, but there are games that are past times, right? A very different thing where, where somebody um, puts their kids to bed, saves uh, an hour at the end of their day, specifically because they want to sit down and they want to play a little bit of Last of Us, right? That's a very different kind of game than, you know, a sort of mobile game. And, and I could say, oh, you know, I really was passionate about creating pastimes, not games to pass the time. And so that's why I'm, I, I want to work at Facebook um, because maybe I'm really passionate about VR. And then you could go into that if VR is where you want to be. If not, you could say, oh, you know, I was trying out VR. But the thing is, I realized the wide impact of a C++ game like uh, at 2K Games, that's what drew me to that. And so if, if, you know, 2K Games is the company you're applying for, you could say, and that's why I'm here. That's why I want to apply to this studio. Or you might say something like, uh, you know what? Working on a code base uh, with a custom engine like 2K or Sony Santa Monica, it, it was fun because it was specialized for the game. But I realized that what's really resonated with me recently is working on projects that are going to be used for a lot of different things. And so that's why I want to work at Epic Games because not only am I creating the Unreal Engine, which is going to contribute to the, the biggest game in the world right now, Fortnite, but it's also going to help contribute to thousands of other games that use the Unreal Engine, including this one and that one and this one. And uh, that's a real honor for me to contribute to all these games, even if it's in, you know, the subtle way of, of creating the engine behind them. Um, not like that's subtle. I mean, that's certainly an undertaking. But you see what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm trying to create a story based on my past experience that makes it so obvious that, oh my gosh, this guy is the guy for the job. He's been training his whole life for this. That's what you want to do. That That's the whole goal there. Because the thing is, there's a difference between somebody who passed the interview and someone who we need to hire, right? Because someone, a bunch of people might pass the interview. And so I think that makes a difference. Um, I'm trying to see. I, I, nothing else is, st is standing out to me right away. But if you have an idea on how to prepare for your interviews, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, or if you have another question, just let me know that too. I'd be happy to help. Uh, like this video if it helped you. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. All right. Thanks so much for the question and good luck on your interviews.